There's a few exciting gaming news stories we have to talk about today, starting with Summer Games Fest getting a brand new detailed roadmap of who all will be partnering with this event, and it is a very impressive list of publishers. Then we also have to cover Sonic Frontiers getting its first glimpse of gameplay, and wow, am I more hyped for this game than ever. Then the big talking point for today's video has to do with Nintendo officially having their first game presentation scheduled for June 1st, which is tomorrow, a breakdown of what to expect and when to expect it, and a broader conversation of how this really sets the stage for a Nintendo Direct announcement happening around the corner. What's up, Nation? If it's your first time on the channel, make sure you join Summer Nation by subscribing below, hit the like button on this video if you enjoy it today, and make sure you turn on your bell notification icon so you're kept up to date with all the newest gaming news. Now, as I mentioned, guys, we got a few different stories to unpack today, and we have to kick it off with a conversation around Summer Games Fest as we do have some brand new information for this event that is essentially trying to be somewhat of an E3 replacement now that, unfortunately, in the year of 2022, E3 was entirely canceled, and whether or not we will see it come back in 2023 like it's been claimed remains to be seen so for the foreseeable future summer games fest may be the organized showcase that we can actually look forward to in june and the reason it is in the news today is because there is now a completed roadmap of all of the different companies that will be participating in this event which i'm very hopeful will be hype and full of gameplay announcements and gameplay trailers that us fans want to see and to get on the same page with what's been announced here let's quickly hop over to vgc and read through their typed up detailed article together Summer Games Fest has revealed a lineup of over 30 participating companies, including Xbox, PlayStation, 2K, and Activision. Over 30 companies set to participate in Summer Games Fest were announced on Tuesday, with more to be confirmed at a later date. The lineup includes 2K, Activision, Atlas, Bandai Namco, Bloober Team, Capcom, Coffee Stain, Deep Silver, Devolver Digital, Digital Extremes, .emu, EA, Epic Games, Focus Entertainment, Bros Giant Studios, Level Infinite, Mediatonic, MiHoYo, Netflix, PlayStation, Raw Fury, Samsung, Sega, Square Enix, Skybound Games, Steam, Studio, MDHR, Tribeca Festival, Warner Brothers Games, and Xbox. The core of Summer Games Fest 2022 will take place from June 9th to 12th, but announcements are expected to be spread over a matter of weeks in June. Notably, Sony Interactive Entertainment will stream a new State of Play presentation on June 2nd at 3 p.m. PT, 6 p.m. ET, or 11 p.m. BST. It will include nearly 30 minutes of announcements and updates on PlayStation games. So that's clearly an impressive lineup of companies that Jeff Keighley's been able to organize as being part of the event in some way, shape, or form. We don't know the level of integration that these companies will have with Summer Games Fest, but you can expect plenty of hype game announcements, and they really secured most of the major names, maybe Ubisoft and Nintendo being the only really two big notable misses here. And what I was really surprised to see is Sony actually marketing their state of play with the Summer Games Fest logo in the top left corner of their announcement, and it's even happening ahead of the official kickoff of Summer Games Fest. So whether or not that was something that was just paid off to be advertised as part of the event, who knows? But regardless, it is nice to see some kind of contingency plan here since E3 has been canceled in the year of 2022. And it is definitely nice to have some kind of a loose schedule to look forward to as far as what days you need to make sure you are free and able to watch these presentations. And it'll be very interesting to continue to watch Summer Games Fest evolve over the years and see what kind of changes they make to the presentation and showcase itself. I am hopeful that this year is really a standout year compared to the last couple that we've seen. And who knows if Jeff Keighley ever talks Nintendo into being aligned with Summer Games Fest, at least from a marketing perspective, it'll be interesting to see if E3 does really come back at all if the companies are already aligned with a different brand partnership. So ultimately, we will have to wait and see how it's structured this year and see how everybody feels about it. But I am at least relatively hyped for this to take place and see what kind of game announcements we can look forward to. So I want to hear from you guys in the comments down below all your thoughts and opinions on everything that's been revealed so far for Summer Games Fest. And definitely let me know which games, if any, you are most hoping we see featured at the Summer Games Fest presentation over the course of the month of June. So please share all your thoughts and feelings and your hype levels around Summer Games Fest 2022 in the comments down below. Now, the next story we're talking about today has to do with Sonic Frontiers, as it just received a brand new gameplay reveal trailer that dropped out of the blue today. It was apparently some kind of IGN exclusive, and it is a relatively short trailer with a small snippet of it being stuff that we've seen before, but then it quickly transitions into brand new live gameplay sequences that we have not seen up to this point. And does it have heavy Zelda Breath of the Wild vibes? Yes, it does. I think that is kind of somewhat of the direction they are trying to go here, but with, of course, Sonic and his mechanics 
mechanics as opposed to Link and a sword, but even the music soundtrack is very reminiscent if you go watch the trailer, which I will have linked in the description down below. It definitely has heavy Breath of the Wild inspiration, and that is no surprise because that really transformed the Zelda series and put, took it to the next level. So, of course, a lot of other series creators would want to do the same for their own franchises. And while the 3D Sonic games have an extremely spotty track record up to this point in time, with certain releases being quality and other ones essentially just being throwaway titles, in my opinion, I still find myself very hyped at the type of gameplay that we saw featured. It looks crisp. It looks fast and responsive. It looks like you have plenty of field space to go as fast as you want as Sonic, which is definitely going to bring back some of the nostalgia that I have for the 2D era of Sonic games, where it really feels like you're moving fast for long periods of time, and it doesn't feel like on rails or just push the button at the right time. You actually have control over everything you're doing, and I will be very curious to see how some of the bosses and enemies unfold because we saw some rather giant type cyber creature type things, I guess you could call them, that Sonic was taking on in this trailer, and who knows what Sega really has planned, but they are definitely doing a good job getting me hyped so far. We can look forward to additional gameplay footage in the month of June, according to IGN, and I'm just hopeful that this is the 3D Sonic game that puts him back on the map, gets him back in the mainstream, and really kind of has that Sonic Adventures level vibe like the series creator has said he wants to achieve with this project. I am hopeful they will do things like a full-on level scaling system, unlock abilities as you progress, have some kind of very interesting side quests that are available that unlock unique items or different areas that you wouldn't be able to access otherwise. Hopefully the open world or open zone concept that they are going for is filled with many different things to do, but also has vast enough landscape that you feel like you really do have to travel to get somewhere. And if they could put that all together in one package with no major bugs or glitches and a very compelling story to boot, I think that this is the return of Sonic being a mainline franchise again and a staple must own gaming series when we see new announcements for the Sonic franchise. So I'm an old school hardcore Sonic fan. I'm very hopeful that I will be brought back into the heavy enjoyment and long gameplay hours into Sonic games again in the modern era. So this trailer did nothing but make me even more hype for this game's eventual release and to the future footage that we will hopefully see around the corner in June. Maybe that will be a part of Summer Games Fest. IGN has some kind of deal with how they are going to roll out news apparently with this game. So we'll see how it all drops and how it all comes together. One thing we don't have any idea on right now is what the Nintendo Switch version of this game actually looks like because I think we can all agree that the kind of graphical fidelity that we're seeing in this open world environment definitely supersedes probably what the Switch is capable of. Not saying it won't get close to that, but how much love is Sega going to put into the port into the Nintendo Switch version? Because it very much comes down to the developers and the work that they are willing to put in as we see massive projects like The Witcher 3 totally capable of running on the Switch, but definitely some impressive port work had to go into that to pull it off. And then meanwhile, you have other companies like Square Enix bringing over all of Kingdom Hearts that could have run mostly fine on the Switch and just doing it as a simple cloud port because they don't want to put in the work to actually make it run on less capable hardware. So I am just hopeful that we don't get a huge graphical downgrade and that things still run at a smooth 30 frames per second. At least I'm pretty confident we won't be able to accept, expect 60 frames per second because not even Sonic Colors Ultimate, which would have been easier to run at 60 frames per second, achieved those speeds when released on the Switch. So depending on the performance difference on the versions of Sonic Frontiers, that will make up my mind on which console I end up picking this up on. But regardless of all of that, I'm extremely hyped to see more information. And as far as I'm concerned, I have a 2022 holiday window game that I will for sure be picking up day one at release with Sonic Frontier. So I want to hear from you guys in the comments down below on all your thoughts and opinions on this brand new gameplay trailer. What are you hopeful we see from the game? And do you have any concern for how it will run on the Nintendo Switch? Or do you think that this will be a simple project to port over with no major technical issues? So regardless, I want to hear from you guys on all things Sonic Frontiers in the comments down below. Now, the last story we're talking about today has to do with Nintendo's first game presentation, and it will be happening on June 1st, as we will be getting a brand new trailer and look at Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, which do claim to be the first true attempt at a open world Pokemon game, as Legends Arceus was definitely open zone, but this claims to be the true launch into open world. And back in February, we got the official announcements that these Pokemon Scarlet and Violet games would be launching in late 2022, and a lot of people were expecting a Pokemon Presents to take place ahead of a Nintendo Direct like we historically see happen in the summertime. And I think that you can safely say now with this announcement that as opposed to getting
getting some kind of Pokemon Presents. This trailer is in place of the Presents, otherwise it would have been at a Pokemon Presents. So this is the big project for Game Freak and the Pokemon Company, and this is the trailer they are going to share with us tomorrow to highlight some of the hype things to expect in this game as part of the summer, as you can read the following posted up by the Pokemon Company on Twitter directly. New Scarlet Violet trailer drops tomorrow. You read that right, trainers. Tune into our YouTube channel at 6 a.m. PDT on 6-1 for the latest on Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. Make sure you're subscribed and have notifications turned on. So I personally am very hyped that the Pokemon Company is dropping this trailer tomorrow and new gameplay details. I'm very hyped to get a more detailed look at what they are trying to go after with a true open world Pokemon experience. I will be very curious to see what kind of gameplay direction they go to. Is it going to be a little bit more similar to what we saw with Legends Arceus or will they go back to a much more traditional Pokemon formula? I would love to hear from you guys which gameplay formula you prefer, but I will tell you right now, I had more fun with Pokemon Legends Arceus than any other mainline Pokemon. Pokemon title I can remember in quite some time, and I really felt like that was the revolutionary step forward we needed to see as Pokemon fans to take the series forward into the future. That said, there are definitely a camp of very hardcore Pokemon fans that would prefer the formula to just stay traditional, so I want to hear which side of the fence you fall on with that. I definitely am hoping that we get more fast action, dodge roll style gameplay where you hide in the grass, you sneak up on Pokemon and throw the ball. You can throw your own Pokemon out to initiate a battle have it all happen in somewhat real time like I was very much a fan of that formula that they created with Legends Arceus and it kind of felt like a test run for what might be ultimately the next step in the franchise I'm just su surprised how fast we're going to see these titles come out as they are 2022 games so the end of this year we have these to look forward to massive open world Pokemon experiences so I'm very hyped to see what the trailer has to hold for us tomorrow we do have to pivot the conversation and talk about what does this mean so we, we know not to expect a Pokemon Presents to happen over the summertime or in June at all, essentially because of this trailer reveal. So does that mean that a Nintendo Direct is around the corner? Well, if I'm a betting man, yes, of course, we've talked about it numerous times on the channel here. We can absolutely expect Nintendo to still hold their summertime Direct presentation in the month of June, regardless of the cancellation of E3. Just because E3 is canceled, they don't need that platform or showcase to put on their own Direct presentation, which is why they actually came up with the Directs to begin with, because they didn't want to have to rely on any kind of vendor or organized event to communicate with their fans and clearly they've found a fire formula with direct presentations and I think that the Pokemon trailer happening this week leads a lot of credence into next week being most likely for the direct presentation to take place. Tuesday June 7th sounds like a great date to me obviously it could be the 7th through the 9th if we see it happen that week or if it is the following week the most likely dates would be the 14th through the 16th so regardless what Nintendo ends up doing I'm sure we are around the corner for many different hype announcements a look at some games that we already know to expect later on in the the year and then hopefully some major reveals something Zelda in 2022 regardless of whether that be Zelda Wind Waker and Twilight Princess HD or some kind of remake like the Oracle games or just some kind of brand new 2D from the top up adventure altogether because I'm down for any of that stuff and then hopefully we see that long rumored and awaited Metroid Prime 1 remake and or Metroid Prime Trilogy HD depending on what that project really is some kind of acknowledgement and update on Metroid Prime 4 I'm not expecting Breath of the Wild 2 information but it could be there I am now more expecting that to be a part of the September Direct now that it has been moved to the spring 2023 time window and then we get things like updated N64 NSO roadmap we get things like the next wave of Mario Kart DLC and if we're really lucky we may even see that long rumored Donkey Kong game that hopefully is in development right now because I think it's definitely time for DK to make a big return and hopefully it's in 2022 or 2023 at the latest but June is the hype month to be a gamer regardless so I want to hear from you guys at this point in the video all the different stories we we talked about today what are your thoughts on summer games fest now forming with all of these different companies and which games are you hoping we see focus on as part of that presentation what are your personal thoughts and impressions on the sonic frontiers gameplay snippet that we saw today and then definitely share with me where your hype levels are for pokemon scarlet and violet the new info that we're going to see tomorrow on that game and your personal predictions for when we will get the nintendo direct officially announced from nintendo themselves and what games are you most hopeful we see featured at that showcase so regardless of your thoughts and opinions on everything we talked about today i do look forward to hearing from you guys in the comments down below before you leave the video as i do look forward to getting a back and forth conversation started with you all around these topics go watch yesterday's video next if you haven't already where we discuss sega being set to potentially reveal new hardware this week and a update around the n64 app that was indeed the bug fix for kirby 64 the crystal shards also make sure you like subscribe turn on your notification bell and i will see you guys in the next video